Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about overstriding when running. Uh, before we do, I'd just like to say a quick congratulations to anyone who did the army run today. Um, I'm wearing my shirt and my medal because I did. With my wife Christine, we did the half. It was really, really hot and I'm incredibly proud of her. She finished um, her first half, half marathon um, in spite of the fact that it was basically like running in an oven. So really proud of her and I hope that uh, everybody managed to enjoy your rest of it even though it was quite a lot hotter than uh, anyone was anticipating probably and uh, not many PRs set today but um, hopefully everyone had a good time. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about overstriding and overstriding, if it's not a term that's familiar to you, but what overstriding means is uh, when we're landing with the when we're running if we're landing with our foot quite far out in front of our center of mass that's uh, termed overstriding that's what that um, particular sort of running style is referred to overstriding is genuinely um, taken to be um, a negative thing it's not a good thing for our running economy our running efficiency that is and uh, makes it harder to run and we'll get into all that um, in a second but basically that's what um, that's what we're going to be talking about today so what is it? First of all, overstriding. It's landing when you when your foot strike is out in front of your center of mass and not close to it. Okay, so your center of mass is is around here, sort of around your lower back, around L four L five. That's about where most people's center of mass is. And if the foot strike, the initial contact, um, is quite far ahead of that center of mass then that would be termed overstriding. Obviously, it's a, it's a matter of uh, you know, um, degrees. It can be more overstriding versus less overstriding. So to try and give you a bit more of a um, sort of black and white answer, are you an overstrider or not? What we can use is um, the pelvis as a kind of reference. So if I just explain what I mean by that with a quick um, illustration. So if you imagine this is our runner, okay? I'm not going to draw the rest because we don't need it. But this is the pelvis here. And if we just mark out the front and back of the pelvis here in blue, okay? And then the point at which he strikes the ground, the uh, foot strike is here. So if we draw a vertical line up from there, we can see that he is landing quite far out in front of his pelvis. So if we go that there. So you see how the foot is out in front of the pelvis. So if you were to take a video of someone and see this at the point of um, foot strike, you would say that that person is overstriding, okay? So that's what we're looking for. Someone who's not overstriding would look a bit more like this. So we'd have the pelvis here and then we're landing with the foot near the center of mass or within the pelvis, not in front of the pelvis. So there's the pelvis front and back mark there, and we can see that the foot strike is within the pelvis. Okay? So, overstriding, not overstriding. Okay? So we can use that pelvis as a, as a guide to whether we're an overstrider or not. This is a bad thing. It is a bad thing because what's happening here is we get something called a breaking force, okay? So as we are um, landing down there and some of our energy is being devoted to slowing us down, right? And then we overcome that and then we get um, uh, the energy is devoted to propelling us forward. So, whereas here, all of the energy is to be um, used as sort of a propulsive kind of uh, force. Here, some of the force is a slowing down or a breaking force and then the rest of it is a propulsive force okay so we want an entirely or almost entirely propulsive force rather than a breaking force than a propulsive force so here we have a lower running economy when you're using this overstriding pattern and a um, higher or more efficient running economy here running economy means how far or how fast we go for a given amount of energy right so it's basically like fuel efficiency in a car. So this is a more fuel efficient way to run, and this is a less fuel efficient way to run. So overstriding, less economical, less uh, efficient way to run. Essentially, the way we think of this um, sort of braking force here, um, you can think of it like uh, running with the brakes on. That's how I phrase it. It's easy to remember. When you're overstriding, you're running with the brakes on, like kind of having like a handbrake on. 
and when you're not over strategy you're not okay so how do we how do you know if you're doing that or if you're doing that well you can just use um like your your camera on your phone and get someone to take a quick video of you as you can do it like from the side uh, or you can set it up and do it on a treadmill and um, so you put the camera pointing at you and you get on the treadmill and you take a sort of 20 second video running at your sort of typical easy pace and then have a look basically and try and pause it at the point where you uh, see the foot strike the ground and then you like sort of imagine a vertical line upwards and see if that vertical line is in front of your pelvis excuse me lost a connection there if it lands in front of the pelvis then it's overstriding if it lands underneath the pelvis then it's not okay um, I just like to use something called the Huddle app, which you can download for free, um, I believe on all devices. It's H-U-D-L app. Uh, it's an app for coaches and that kind of thing. And what you can do on Huddle app is you can kind of scroll through, you can put it into slow motion, you can scroll through and freeze frame at the point at which you want to have a look. And that's really handy because what you can do, especially on these um, the newer cameras that have higher uh, frame rates of like 240 per second and that kind of thing, you can really get a good image of where you're striking the ground. And the, the place you want to freeze it is not when the foot first touches the ground. So we have this, uh, the phases of the gait cycle, we have this one called initial contact. That's where you first get the, any kind of touch on the ground. That's not the one we want. We want to let it go just a frame or two more and when you start to see the load being accepted, so what we call loading response, is when the shoe starts to deform a little bit, which is like the cushioning starts to squish. So as you're cushioning and your shoe starts to squish a little bit, that's where you firm, uh, that's the frame you're after. So you hold it there. And then at that point, you're gonna draw a line, because on the huddle app, you can, with your finger on the screen, you can draw like a vertical line, kind of like I did here. Um, and you see if that vertical line lands uh, within your pelvis or not. The point at which you draw the line, okay, so if you're using the hood lap, you're, you're looking for the lateral malleolus, right, which is a sort of technical sounding term, but what you're looking for is the little bony bit on the outside of your ankle, right? So that's the place where you draw the line straight up vertically, and then you can draw another line on the front and back of the pelvis, and just like I've done here, you'll see something very similar on the app, and then you have a look on the blog, which is linked in the description I think it comes out above this video, or maybe below, it's in, it's in the description. Um, you can just click that link and you'll see what I did with the Huddle app. I take a couple of uh, screenshots and I dropped it into that blog and did exactly the same thing with me demonstrating an overstriding and a regular or, or a more optimal form of uh, running. So um, Huddle app is a really good way to, to know for definite if you're overstriding or not. So um, if you are, right, then you want to ask yourself, what would you do about it? Okay, so there's two cues that I found particularly helpful to help um, um, discourage overstriding. The first is to imagine a wall in front of you. So you imagine, you know, you're running along, you're on the treadmill, you're running, and you imagine that there's a wall like really, really close to you, just a few inches in front of you. So if you reach your leg too far in front, you're going to kind of bang your knee or your toes on the wall. Okay, and if you try and think about that, you may find that yeah, overstriding is discouraged. If you do that while you're videoing, you can see if that's a cue that works well for you, okay, and improves uh, the running technique so you see something more like this and less like this. Uh, the other one that's a little bit more hit and miss is called pullback. So pullback is when you imagine your foot being like an animal's paw, like a, a dog's paw or something, and you're trying to pull the road back behind you like this. Um, the other way you can think of it is a bit like, like roadrunner's legs, kind of cycling underneath you instead of sort of reaching out in front of you. So pull back is the other cue. So the first cue that I find works more commonly is um, the wall in front of you. That works really quite well most of the time. If that doesn't work, it doesn't feel comfortable, it just doesn't seem to do much for you, uh, try pull back, see if that works a little bit better. If either of those two work, then awesome. You're gonna try and um, slowly integrate that into your running technique so it becomes more of your sort of go-to pattern. And the, um, as always, I always say, you know, if you're going to implement some kind of technique change, you don't want to do it quickly because if you just start running with all your runs the whole time with this new cue in your head and you'll completely change the way you run and something, you know, one of your tissues won't be adapted to that type of running and you're going to get injured, right? And then you're going to be upset. So if you're going to do it, you're going to do it slowly. So the way I would suggest is one minute of five for the first few weeks only on easy runs. That means that on your easy run, for one minute, you think about this cue, whichever it is of the two, 
And then for the other four minutes of that five minutes, you just forget about it and let your mind wander. And again, after that fifth minute, you go again one minute, thinking about the cue, and then forget about it again. And then you just do that for the whole of the run. Now, now, typically, I only recommend people do it on the easy runs to start with, just to let them get used to it. And then once you've done that, for say three to four weeks, and you're not having any issues, then you can start increasing to two out of every five minutes. And then you do that for three or four weeks, and then three out of five minutes, that for a few weeks. Then you start doing it in some of the other runs as well. And then you'll just bring it in very, very slowly like that, so your tissues have time to adapt. And that's pretty much it for that one. Just a short one today, thankfully, because I'm quite tired after that long run in the heat today. So maybe everybody else is as well and doesn't want to think about running right now. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video today on overstriding. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like I said, check out that blog, which has some screenshots of the Huddle app and a link to the Huddle app so you can uh, download it and have a go yourself at home if you want to. Um, and if you had a race this morning, hope it went really well. If you had a just a long run or a training run, hope that went okay. And I hope everyone has a nice rest of your weekend and we'll see you next week. Okay, thanks.